It's okay. I'm still now I'm waiting for the little red light to turn on. The button's depressed. Depressed. We're all depressed. Well, we are now. Yeah. With a seven year old Mac. The red, the red line is on and there's still no movement. This is so, this is so bad. And the, and the little circle, the, the rainbow circle, which everybody hates, yeah. is up. Um, what do you usually use when you're recording this? I usually record on. Um, just my phone on a on an app that I've got, which is just like a uh, a voice recorder, and I talk to yeah. you on, and I talk to you on Messenger. But Messenger, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but Messenger's not currently working at the moment. Like I'm looking at this at the moment now. Get this, okay? Bear with me. Hang on, I'm just going to stop it just for a second because apparently it's been recording. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. It has been a while, um, guys. Welcome to the Cigar Box Guitar Builder podcast this is episode we're going to call this episode 57 um there's not really a um there's not really a title for this one this is this is going forward i think mark and i are going to be doing this a lot more um together as in chatting back and forwards we're also going to be interviewing um some people uh in the cigar box guitar building community as well uh on the odd week uh but at the moment it's it's you've got me and mark today and um yeah it's really good to have you back mate yeah, good to be back. <laughs> so what's, what's – <laughs> great, all right. <laughs> See you later. No. What's, what's been happening? What's been going on with you? I think we've got our first glitch. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> I, can, I can hear you now. Yeah, all right. so <laughs> that's all right. So what's, what's actually been happening with you, mate? What's going on? Um, well, uh, I've had very little time to build, but now I'm, I'm, in, I'm on I'm – on, I don't know what you call it. I've got way too many on now. But I've, 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 I'm overdoing it. I'm actually doing a few traditional builds too. So, so when you say traditional builds, you mean what acoustics or? Yeah, well, actually, I shouldn't say traditional. I'm, I'm actually doing a, a, a six-string electric uh, nylon, like a Chet Atkins style guitar. Oh wow! Well, like oh, sorry, not six string, four string. I'm doing a four string. It's that's a tenor version of that sort of guitar. Oh, okay. All right. So, how's that working yeah. out? Well, slowly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, teething problems and all because I've never made anything like this before. So, um, so is it a hollow body? Resonator. Sorry, it, uh, it is. It is chambered. It's chambered. Oh, okay. um, just just to keep the weight down. Uh, I'm going to see how it goes, uh, and then I'm going to make a whole bunch of box versions of them. Ooh. Because yeah. I've got I've got classical tuners now. So. <laughs> you have classical tuners. I what? do. I have I have tuners now for nylon string. Now I've just got to find someone who's you know willing to sell me just three strings in nylon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I tell you what, it's, no, I'm glad actually. This, I'm glad you said that because I'm, I'm. Funnily enough, I've got six nylon string guitars downstairs, like old old salvage things that I've got, which I'm looking for tuners for. So there you go. Um, I said at the end of last week's episode, I might as well just do a little disclaimer now in this episode. Then I'm not going to do this disclaimer again because I just I'm going to say it once. Um, last week, I at, at the end of last week's episode, I was just I did a very short little epi- uh, episode about 16 minutes, just telling people where I was as a business, what had happened in the last year since I'd opened the shop in Katoomba. Uh And at the end of the video, uh, video at the end of the podcast, I said that uh, you and I were going to be back. Uh, doing the podcast again together. Um, yep. You and I uh, are mates. Um, I do order my stock from you. Uh, you Correct. Know, a lot of I do tend to order. I don't order everything from you, but I, t- I do order quite a bit of stock from you. Um, but that's about as far as it goes. So it's it's two people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's two There's people. Really, no nepotism or anything like that. No. Going on, so no. <laughs> no. It's a, neither of us are in a position where we're able to do that. So this is a this is a basically a, a podcast which is free from um, free from any form of uh, support apart from uh, or what's what's the word I'm looking for? Um, we're not endorsed by anyone. Based. So we're not, we're not endorsed. Or supported, yeah. 
No, so you know, so if if I order something from Mark, I pay re, I pay retail, I pay my postage. It's, it's the same as anyone else who orders from Mark or from any of the other suppliers out there. So and that's indeed. And the reason that it's good that we can do that is that we may have a situation where you know we may want to talk with you know with someone from another one of the, another company or yeah, sure, and it, sure. put, yeah, and it puts us in a situation where we're not feeling like we're you know we're putting someone out or doing anything like that. Having said that, um, I'm very happy to say that we've actually got some supporters from uh the i think it's the patreon from from the podcast we've actually got people who are who are paying a couple of dollars a a, a month to support us and that all, all that's basically doing is helping us put the podcast out live it's going towards the, the cost of actually running the podcast which isn't super expensive it's 15 bucks and it's time and some research and things like that but we do it because we love it, and you know, Mark and I are good mates, and we just love talking about guitars. So that's basically it. I'm not going to say anything about it apart from that. Any again, if anyone's got any questions, well, don't ask us. Everything I've spoken about on the here and now, and I think you've done the same. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Look, um, well, so we won't mention about the check that's on its way. No. <laughs> <laughs> checks, checks. We discussed this. <laughs> we did. I mean, check boxes. Check boxes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say no, I was going to go somewhere mildly racist with that but I'm not going to now so <laughs> oh, I'm lucky it's radio there you go so alright so you, your guitars are all happening um, as far as so that's your own personal personal builds now cigar box guitars you're going to be doing a bit of those yeah, yes, yeah, so I've got quite a few on the build. Um, I've got a uh, a blank, unfinished box in stock these days, so I, I sell a few of those, and they're actually really good kit ones because, like yourself, you put patterns on them. Not patterns, um, like transfers. Yeah. I've seen a few of your boxes like that, so oh, they're yeah. good for that sort of thing, and I'm making basically a couple of my own models, much like your own uh, Lightning Boys and yep. oh, yeah, Storm Rider. Storm Rider. No, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, uh, we'll do. Yeah, we do the. I've got four. We've got the Hurricane, which is the the PZO fretless, which is your basic model. Then there's the Storm Rider, which is the PZO um, uh, the PZO fretted. Then we've got the Rolling Thunder, which is the fretless with the electric guitar pickups. And then we've got the Lightning Boy, which is basically the the all the bells and whistles and and everything. Yeah. So which used uh, to have my pickups on it, but I'm not doing that anymore. anymore so anyone out there who wants them, you can't. Keep going. Um, yeah. So. What's I so you've you've discontinued the mortal coil pickups as we know. So from yes. my point of view, there's no issue there because what I've basically done is I've swapped over to your three pole uh, humbuckers, and people are yep. loving it. So the people are still going with those. I'm still getting order upon order upon order for Lightning Boys and stuff like that at the moment. So that's that's yep. my issue. No teething problems, but you have finished them. Yes, they are yeah, done. Yeah. But for now, anyway, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with everyone else in their little flat pickups, but I'm yeah. kind of reluctant to go overseas to get them made. I'd rather do them myself and just make them a little better. Yeah. So, um, and then I'll house them, hopefully, in some Australian hardwood, but they'll still be around six mil thick. That's what I'm going for. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I think we were talking about it. This is very similar to... The pickups that we were to, the pickup that we were talking about that I actually used on I think it was a prototype that you sent me to test and I actually put it into a cigar box guitar and it's the that particular instrument was the one that I've actually used to do the podcast uh, intro music. Oh yeah. So which which oh, was interesting. I know the one you're talking about now. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually more like a traditional um, bobbin style uh, pickup. That was very thin. That was like ridiculously thin. <laughs> yeah, it was a real pain to find because <laughs> 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 it didn't really thin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you talking about it. I remember talking. That it was. I, I wasn't surprised that I only ever got the one. So for for people. <laughs> so I think the mortal coils, so far from what I've seen, from my point of view, they they've gone through three different. They went through three different life lifespans. The first one, of course, was okay. The first one was the one which screwed in from the top, and that was relatively that was relatively thick. That's right. Well, no, they started off with the mounting ring, like a standard. Pickup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. I had the mounting well, you know, ring. with the height, height adjustments and all that sort of stuff. That's going right. On. That's right. And that was that was and cool. And then I got you to I got you to build those crazy um, flatline pickups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I still love. They were awesome pickups, man. They were awesome. I loved them. I loved them so. Much. But I know they were an absolute nightmare for you to make. So yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were a nightmare. And then you then there was the then there was.
was that the the flat one that you sent me, the, the prototype, which I absolutely loved. That was just, but I could see that uh, you'd actually routed the inside of that by that the top, the cap by hand, hadn't you? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, it was just a prototype, so I'm going to do everything right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the second time around, you, you know, you build a template and then you make a thousand of them. And then, <laughs> but then I, well, but then I did notice that you did. There weren't any more done after that. No. No. <laughs> No, no, that's it. No, and then there was the then there was the mortal coil pickups, which I know Nigel McTrustry absolutely loved those as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and were got some of the last ones like you did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, man, it's just they're, they're just uh, they're just gorgeous. The tone that came out of those is absolutely beautiful. So, look, I'm, I wish you all the best of luck in in in, in <laughs> kind of resurrecting some sort of version of of them, which is because uh, I, I just think it's a it's. It's a sad. It's a sadder day that we don't have the mortal coils. So you know. Well, that's a nice thing to say. Adam. Oh well, they're a great. They're a good pickup, mate. And if if they weren't, I'd say, well, you know, I'm glad you're not doing them because they were shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind you saying that. Either. No. <laughs> I, I, I can go. Not easily offended, this fella. No, well, <laughs> well, I think initially. See, if you listen to this, everybody. All right, that's a piece of paper, and this piece of paper, where Mark and I were actually. <laughs> Actually sat and we sat there and went, okay, we are going to have some sort of structure to the program. And already we're currently eleven minutes in and and we're well off. So anyway, yeah, we're somewhere between bullet point one and bullet point two. Somewhere, all right. <laughs> so look, I'll just let everyone know what's happening with us. This this last week's been been really really interesting for us in the shop. Um. A year or so ago, when when we opened, I had a couple of people approach me and say, "Look, uh, you know, are you interested in having my, you know, my cigar box guitars in the shop?" Uh, and it was something that I had to have had to have a really really good think about because obviously any cigar box guitars that are in the shop are going to be competing with my own cigar box guitars. And you know, when you're selling on consignment, you are making you know you're making less you are making less money because of course you need to pay the person who has actually the talent who's actually made made the instrument. So. A year in where, you know, we were uh, with the shop, we've got quite a bit of consignment stock now with electric guitars and some acoustics and things like that. And one range of uh, really funky uh, electric guitars, which have been made by uh, a good good uh, bloke that I know up in Queensland um, uh, named Phil. And I'll have a chat with Phil. Oh, Mr. Ashby. Mr. Oh, no, Mr. Yes, Ashby. Mr. Ashby. <laughs> Um, and so Phil's actually Phil's been sending some guitars down to us, and they've been selling great guns. They've been absolutely fantastic. So it kind of opened my eyes up to the fact that at the moment with myself, I've got like I'm currently sitting on ten customer orders downstairs at the moment here in the ha- here at the house where where the workshop is, and I literally am have, struggling to keep up with with the demand for because it is only me building for demand for stock for the shop and stock for the customer orders because they're currently running about a, a week to a week and a half behind and I don't like that I prefer to be a week to a week and a half in advance but at the same time I don't particularly you know I, I need to be a bit particular about the types of cigar box guitars that I actually bring into the shop because ideally I don't want them to compete with mine so they need to be quite different um, this will come up you may even know this gentleman's name Michael Wardman now, Michael, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Michael, Michael is yeah. quite the builder. Yes. Now, Michael is uh, Michael's actually a, um, uh, a I want to say carpenter, but it's not a carpenter. He's a, he's a joiner. He's a, he's a joiner by trade. And um, I'm a chippy by trade. Yes, we know. So he's kind of like the like the surgeon version of someone who butchers. Yes. <laughs> well, let me tell you because I saw his I saw a couple of his cigar box guitars on Facebook buy and sell in Parramatta, and I, I was blown away, and I contacted him, and I said, mate, we got to have a chat, we got to have a talk, and uh, well, we just we just struck up a struck up a bit of a friendship, just chatting back and forwards, and, and having a talk about cigar box guitars and things like that, and it's eventuated that um, a couple of days ago, I think it was on Friday, um, Michael actually came up to the shop with three of his guitars, and um, we've actually got those guitars in the shop, and let me tell you, man, it's... They're they're next level. They're just they're they're stunning. They're absolutely gorgeous. Like this is you know uh, this is you know twenty thirty however many years of joinery. Like when you look at them and you know we've priced them we've priced them you know uh, you know to be 
it's reflective of the skill that's actually gone into actually building those. And and he's actually had. I think he's he was actually quite chuffed that, you know, he's only fairly new. He's only he's only relatively new to building cigar box guitars, but he's certainly not new to building quality um, cigar box quality. Whatever quality furniture yeah, he, and things what's he like that. Is it divergent or something? Divergent, like yeah, divergent CBG. So we've got three of his gorgeous guitars in the shop. Um, they're uh, multi laminate necks. Um, the boxes are super sturdy. Um, he's yeah, stoked, absolutely wrapped, and they're just they're lovely instruments. They play beautifully. Um, you know, I know, I know he gets. I think he gets gets most of his parts. I think from you. Um, we were, ha- we were having a good ch- we were having a good chat about that. I said, "Oh, Mark, we'll chat." Oh, yeah, Mark, I know Mark. He gets you know. I have the same chat with Phil. Phil's the same, you know, from um, from Twangbo. I love Phil's name for Twangbo. Um, and going forward, we're actually just having a chat at the moment. And um, uh, Mark Wilkes from Buzzbox Guitars is actually going to be popping in next Sunday. Fingers crossed to with a couple of his own guitars, actually, to have in the shop as well. So, oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think he's got a shop, doesn't he? Doesn't he do repairs? He and, like, does. Yeah. I think he's a guitar teacher as well. He is. Now, he's there, as, I, as I've... Like, I, I do say on the, po- on the podcast a fair bit, and I'll keep doing this because I'll keep promoting it, the fact that in Australia, there's, a, there's three dedicated cigar box guitar shops that I actually know of. If there's more, I'd love for someone to tell me because I, I want to promote them. But there's, you know, there's obviously Shane Soul down in um, oh, yeah. Yakandanda. And uh, he's, a, he's a genuinely lovely guy, mate. He's, he's a grouse he, fella. He is grouse. I'm <laughs> telling you, you won't find a more grouse bloke. Uh, him and Pip, mate, that's the the two of the nicest blokes you'll ever meet. And, um, and there's obviously myself, some some bum up in Katoomba, and uh, and we've got I think Mark Wilkes down in um in the yeah, Sutherland Oatley. Shire with o- village I think Oatley, isn't he? Oatley, yeah, Oatley, that's right. And I think it's a uh, village village guitars is the name. Yeah, of the that's shop. the one. Village guitar. That's it. And he uh, and he's got Buzzbox, which is the name of his um, cigar box guitar. So hopefully everything going well, uh, we'll actually be able to um, have a couple of of his guitars. So I'm um, I hope I'm not pre pre saying it before it's happened or whatever but you know it's uh, I'm pretty excited about the idea of having them in the shop and uh, it's a very cool thing but uh, that's basically what's happening with me I suppose I was staying and you were talking about a Gretsch before I've got a gorgeous old Gretsch um, I think it's a country gent uh, in the shop at the moment that's the pickups have just all of a sudden stopped working so uh, that's that's going to be my job this week to figure out what's actually happened with that guitar yes. so hopefully it's, I think it may just be something stupid like the output jack the, the wire, wire from the output jack may have broken off so because if that happens you're not going to get any sound I figure it's something simple it can't be something it couldn't possibly be something difficult with a Gretsch so. No, 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 no. Certainly won't be, you know, hard to access. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, hollow body and the f holes are painted on. The only way into this thing is through the pickup cavities. So become yeah. one with the Gretsch, my yeah, friend. Yeah, well, one it's, with it's, the it's like the old, it's like the old joke of having to go, you know, doing surgery through the exhaust pipe. So yeah. um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell that joke because, quite frankly, it offends people. No. <laughs> so let's let's move on. There's a couple of um. Uh, one of one of the uh, parts of the of the show that we're going to be doing is actually going to be trawling the internet. We're going to be scoping things out and looking for guitars, which are you know cigar box guitars, which are piquing our interest. And uh, one of the guitars that came up this week is from uh, an Aussie builder down in Tassie, I believe, and it's Mick Verco. Uh, Mr. Verco, yes, yep, yeah, yeah, super bloke. Now I've actually I've been chatting with Mick. Hopefully we'll be able to have an interview with Mick for the podcast in the next couple of weeks, which would be Is rather he in interesting. Tassie? I thought he was in New South Wales. No, I think he's in Tassie from the best. Unless, <laughs> well, I'll find out when I interview him. So you know, actually, this is, is, you know, he was one of the first people I'd ever heard of when I came to Cigar Box Guitar Building in Australia. Yep. Uh, well, he's. I think he's one of the admins for. I think it's the Cigar Box Guitar. It's one of the biggest cigar box guitar groups. And I think he's one of the main admins for that. And he, um, yep. and he's uh, the thing I like about Mick is he doesn't he doesn't hold his tongue. He doesn't. He's he's straightforward. <laughs> he's a stra- yes, that is very true. <laughs> he is a he is a straight shooting fellow, Mick. He's a he's very straight shooting. He'll tell you he'll tell you what he thinks and tell you know he's respectful and um, but he doesn't he doesn't take any BS. That's for sure. So which I think is I think it's needed. You know. But it's commendable as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Now, 
going back, we're just having a look at this guitar. Now, you've got a picture in front of you at the moment, don't you? I do. So what we've actually got here is a resonating uke, um, and he's made it from, I believe it might be, is that a punch box? Oh, um, my eyes are... Mine's really small. It's, yeah, no, I sh- oh, next time I do this, I'll blow the picture up a bit more. No, I think... Can you? Rome, it might be a Rome, it's either Romeo and Juliet or... No, I think it's a punch. Oh, no, sure. hang on, it no. Looks like, it looks like a brooch to me, it's so tiny. It's... <laughs> <laughs> He's made a beautiful brooch. No. <laughs> I'll tell you who does make beautiful like brooches. It's, it's a CBB. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know who does make beautiful things like that is our, our good old mate, um, uh, uh, um, oh, Jesus Christ, Bone bone Slides. I've got his slides in my shop. Um, uh, Randy Bretts? Randy Bretts. Jesus crikey. Yep, anyway. Yeah, Randy. Um, he does lovely things like that. But, no, this is actually a full-sized ukulele. Um, and... Macanudo, I reckon that might be a Macanudo box because it's got the light green back on it. Might be, yeah. might be a Macanudo or it might be a punch. I'm not sure. I can't see. The picture's too small. Go and check it out, guys. Anyway, I think it's actually on our. It's on the group. It's on our group. So if you slide back through about a week or so ago, you'll actually see this, and it's gorgeous. Now, the difference with it being is that he's actually done uh, the top. He's actually got a resonator. And I'm just looking at it. I think he's actually... Is he used either a coffee lid or he's used a um, a paint tin lid? I'm not too sure. But lots of perforations in it. Yeah, he's drilled a heap of holes through it. So basically that's the sound. Board. Have you ever done anything like that before? Me? Yeah. I have never done the, a paint tin lid. I've done actual... I've got those um, uh, actual cones. Yeah. And I've, I've made... One of the first guitars I ever built was actually out of tuna cans. But it had absolutely no volume, so that's that's as far as I go with the resonator. Tuna cans. You made the tu- yeah, I made a tricone. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got with. See, I I've done one before. I did one before. Actually, sold it to a good. So ended up selling it to a good mate of mine. Actually, um, but it was a from memory. It was a fretless, and it was a. It was actually, I think, it was a coffee tin lid. And it really does change the sound of the guitar. It really, really does. And For sure. it was it was sitting. It did sit slightly above. I think it did sit slight sit slightly above the um, the neck or the through neck. Um, but it definitely gives you a different um, a different resonance. And I think it is definitely different to a cone. I think the cones the the cones that you get are a lot more. Um, I think they're a lot more sophisticated in tone. Oh, well, they're designed to act like a speaker. You yeah. Know, they, they do, they project. Yeah. They're really good. Whereas whereas these these things, like when you're using a paint tin lid or something like that, it's it really just, all it's doing is it's it's tinnifying. I don't know. It's just it's <laughs> tinnifying <laughs> the sound. Yeah. I think I've, I've yeah. made, a new, made a new term up. Um, the one time I've actually seen it, seen these sounds, there's a... There's a builder. Um, there's a builder up on, I think, on the central coast, who, and I can't remember his name, but he hammers the t- he hammers the lids, and he and they actually like there's a lot of work involved in it. I know Justin Johnson did a video many years. I remember when I first was watching Justin Johnson uh, Johnson videos way back in the day. There, there was a video that he did for this fellow, and he was hammering out paint tin lids. Hmm. And I don't remember that. It, and it it does when you hammer it out, it does something. It, it does. It, I think it strengthens the steel somehow, but it also makes it thinner. Um, yeah, I would say it makes it ring. So. Yeah, and it was it was absolutely uh, amazing. Um, but it's a more tin lid, just so you know. What's it's a, a mozzie coil tin lid? This thing. Sorry, that's what I'm looking at. I've just found the phone. Oh, you Sorry, found guys, it. I interrupted. It was so rude of me. I know, but it's a, it says more tin, and I reckon it's actually a more tin. Tin that you used to put under your table, you know, with the curl, oh, the coils. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Jesus. He, he, I'm sure he'll let us know. I'm sure he will. This is, wow. But this is, this and is. It looks like a really nice biscuit bridge on there. I wonder where that came from. That's <laughs> <laughs> Now, all right, all right, people. Now we know that we know that like the show's not endorsed or the show's not promoted. You know, by, by, oh, but however, having said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> having said that, Mark's free to say whatever he wants. <laughs> Indeed. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, yeah, actually, in fact, I'm um, I'm actually 
uh, I'm actually thinking about doing um, pre-made uh, wiring harnesses for guitars, not just for like for cigar box guitars and things like that, but also for electrics. Just basically setting up things like that because it's, it's surprising yep. how many people are coming into the shop wanting, you know, work done on old electric guitars and things, and it just. If I've got them all pre-made, there either they can do it themselves, or they can, you know. So that's that's anyway. That's that was the other thing that I was doing this week, figuring out uh, figuring out that. But um, anyway, that's Mick Verco's beautiful um, resonator Ute made from a cigar box and possibly a Mortine lid. You're thinking? Yes, I'm reading it. M O R T E I N. So okay, Mort, Mort meaning death, and Iron meaning fly. I guess. No, I'm joking. Yeah, Mort, but, uh, dead fly. <laughs> it's a dead fly lid. So a dead fly lid. A Mortine, for anyone who's not sure if you're in the States or in Europe and you're not sure about what this is. Oh, Mort- they know what Mortine is. The States do. That's where the ad came from. Oh, really? Yeah, I think they big. They, they know about Mortine. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm still thinking Pebo. I could be wrong, unless it is an Aussie thing, but yeah. I could be wrong. Oh, I don't know. I'll see, I was thinking Pebo. Hit him with the old Pebo. That one. Oh, remember Pebo. that? Hit him high, hit him low. Hit him high, hit him low. Yeah, you remember Ted Bullpit? I do, and he's not someone we should probably mention. Probably not. <laughs> He's not a very PC character. You know? Apparently not. Apparently not. But then again, neither are we. So anyway. Leave your money on the fridge. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, all right. So this week's topic, we're going to talk about the different... Oh, hang on. So this was interesting because we were going to talk about different types of piezo pickups. So rod versus disc. So I don't know. It's it's Nothing's really come, nothing's really come up. During the week, it was just a thought that I had because I personally I hate rod piezo, piezo pickups. I just don't like them. Okay, um, it's a mean I thing. have a massive issue with the discs. Uh, they are not designed for sound, really. Yes, well, as we know. But the, but the, whereas the, the rod ones actually, there's actually several different types of rod ones. There's the flexible sort of ones as well as the, the hard ones. But the the, the discs, I just they've got a tone I just can't. Bear. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I like a little bit of overdrive too, which really doesn't suit a, po- a, a, a piezo piezo. Well, see, yeah, so. see, here's the interesting thing. Like, what probably some of the best piezo uh, cigar box guitars that I've ever heard are there, there's two: uh, uh, Daddy Mojo yep. and our good mate uh, Mike Snowden who we've interviewed previously. Now, as far as I know, it's uh, going back, Mike actually uses disc, uh, disc piezos on his builds. Yep. And Daddy Mojo, probably up until about, I don't know, five, maybe five years ago when I was watching a lot of their videos, um, up until about that time, and I remember him them making them and actually installing disc piezos. And I've got a Daddy Mojo. I've got, I think... Hang on, was that in, did he use the, the um, uh, what are they called, Dominoes? Was that him? Dominoes... Someone used to make them years ago. The disc one. They used to put them in a domino. No, no, I don't think it was. I don't think it was him. No, they. I look. I've got one of. I've got one of Daddy Mojo's um, pizos. You know the ones that they did with the flowers. They did that that ser- that limited series of cigar box guitars that they were burning the tops and doing the uh, the illustrations. I think one was a star. One was the flowers, which is the one that I've got. Another one might have been a horse or something like that. Um, they were, it was a limited edition run from about two, maybe two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. And, um, and that's actually a disc, that's a disc piezo. And you get a great sound out of it, you know, but it's just, see, for me, I don't know why every single time, and it could be me, it could be simply me not using them right, I don't know. But every single time I've tried to use a rod piezo, it sounds like crap. And uh, you, you need to you need to use them on a four string. To be honest, they're, they're designed for ukuleles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just see, I don't build ukes, not really. No. It's, yeah, it's it's and the majority of this cigar box guitars that I build are generally three string. Uh, I reckon I build probably. I think like ninety five percent of the sales that I make are on three string instruments. Straight up, straight up. It's it's, uh, and I don't mind four strings. Don't don't get me wrong. I've got a couple of lovely four strings myself. What are you doing? Oh, uh, there could be a numerous amount of things, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I was looking for that pickup we we're just talking about. Which one? 
Oh, I saw. I had a. I had a box um, with this pickup in it. it was made out of Domino, and I, I can't oh. quite remember the. It was you know some guy had a logo on the outside. I thought it was Daddy Mojo, but it's probably not. No. Or maybe Hobo something. Oh, oh God, you're going back now. Gee whiz. Yeah. <laughs> Gee whiz. I re- yeah. I I do. Uh, nah. Yeah. I, nah. Yeah, I do remember. I do. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not having a stroke. I'm fine. Um, I, I do. Re- I do remember. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, um, hobo tone, hobo mojo, something. I, ho- mojo. Yeah, ho- yeah, yeah. Something. Anyway, I can't. I cannot remember. I cannot. I'll, I'll try and look it up. We'll try and look it up and talk about it next week. Um, uh, but anyway, so yeah, so you, but you don't often use pesos in your builds, anyway, do you? I. I. Never used them. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I, I, um, I'm in the process of d- doing one with a piezo, but it's a rod, not yeah. a disc. I yeah. just can't do discs. Yeah. Um, but it's a nylon string, and so I'm hoping, and being an undersaddle bridge, it'll work. Yeah. So, you know, I'll actually put it under the bone saddle and, and, and but, you know, like a standard. Well, what, one, of my, one of my favourite things to do is find old acoustic guitars which are just trashed like trashed they're either they've been hit and smashed and like thrown out they're in the bin like the back has probably fallen off them and just to do them up and then i'll either if the bridges are completely stuffed i don't want to spend the time fixing the bridge and then selling it for because i don't these guitars i don't sell them for a lot of money but what i love doing is actually cutting the hole where the bridge is and putting in a dog putting in a dog bowl and yep. what I generally do is I, I, I hook them up with a, with disc piezos and things like that and run them into a volume and tone uh, with a 0.022 capacitor. And, man, they sound epic. They sound yeah. huge. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a bit more nous behind you when it comes to soldering too. Sorry, that's soldering for you, so you guys over the pond. Yeah, um, but yeah soldering. Because you've been making those pedals. I'm hopeless. <laughs> Trust Hang on. Certain. There is an L in the word, isn't there? It, yeah, but I think it's pronounced sodder in the States, or at is least it? some parts of the States, yeah. Well, in the UK, it might be sod off. I don't know. Well, that's true. You wouldn't say sold off. No. Or maybe that's where it came from. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's, 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 let's agree to disagree on that one. So, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I can't, can't even remember what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, it's, no, it's just... I have an absolute ball with them, and they and they're just brilliant. And finding um, uh, old Lloydy who used to work with me in the shop until he went and got himself married, the damn fool. Um, <laughs> he um, he has his, he had this old guitar, this old beat up black guitar which was held together with nails and screws, and and uh, we put these we put I put two disc um, two disc pizos in uh, just in front of the bridge in parallel, and oh my god, it sounded brilliant. It's like you, we were running it through a marshal, and it just was like wow, like it was just amazing. But you know, it's just one of those funny things. I think I connect, I connect with this pesos. I get them. Maybe I get them. I, I suppose I built like we hit last week seven hundred guitars. Really, really, in five years, seven hundred guitars. Um, that's disturbing. That's not if you. That's not including. That's not including the first year that I was building them. Because the first year I was building them, I just I made it like a couple and just kind of gave them away and 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 yeah, I think that's fairly normal. Yeah, Most people do, don't they? no, 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 that's not. Really? The mo- I find there's a lot of people out there who build one or two and they become a business. <laughs> so okay, you know, yeah, and that yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, <laughs> hats off to them, you know. They well, that's if they're doing look, Michael is a perfect example of that. Michael Michael Wardman is a perfect example of someone, but he's got the thing is though he's got that history behind him yeah. of building and knowing timber, knowing how it works, putting something together which works. Because it's just, and I think if you're doing that and you're giving them away, that's okay. But when someone's giving like paying money, you know, yeah. you want you want because even Michael says this is guaranteed for life. Anything that I sell in my shop, I guarantee for life. Parts and parts and labour, I guarantee it straight away. I, no whiffs, no buts, no maybes. Any guitar that you get, if there's a fault with the tuner, I'll re- I'll replace it. It's like you got to, you have to, you know. You, your customers, yeah. you know, as long as they're not hitting each other over the head with it at a gig or something like that, that's a different story. But anyway, I'm, I'm completely diverging off the point. Anyway, so you're a Rod fan. Oh, 
I'm a, am a Rod fan if I have to, you have to. enjoy Pizos. Right. It, you're, you're, <laughs> That's how I do it. Yeah, so I've, my, my Pizzo joy is in Rod form. Yeah, yeah, but but you'd rather not. No, no, I, no, 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 I'm an electric pickup man. Look, I come from a very heavy sort of music background, so yeah. Yeah. it's kind of hard to do that with a, with a Pizzo. So. Yeah, <laughs> can be sometimes. Sometimes, although Mike Snowden does get a pretty heavy tone out of his, I've got to say that it's really interesting to see how he does that. Now, glad we had a chat about that. I do want to have a chat about one more thing that's come up. Now we're at thirty-five minutes, so we're going to just kind of try and keep the podcast to a manageable kind of driving in the car, going to work. Oh, that's good. That's a good time, you know. Unless you're like me, a couple of years ago, and you're an hour and a half each way. That's ridiculous. So we don't want to go that long. And frankly, Mark doesn't want to talk to me for that long anyway. So I don't want to talk to me for that long. No. <laughs> so during the week, Michael Pinkerton, who has, uh, who's one of the moderators or the owner of uh, Fretless CBG Builders, the group, the Facebook group. Uh, I don't know this one. Ah, you don't know it. I do not. You do not. Go and check it out, man, because it's, it's awesome. There's amazing builds. He's a lovely guy. Um, he also he's he's constantly putting up um, pictures of uh, of all of the, the the group builds and things like that, which it's got me thinking. I might start doing the same for ours instead of me putting my my dopey old guitars up there or put someone else's stuff up there. Um, but <laughs> but oh, here he, we go. He did ask a very interesting question during the week, and that was. If you had to make a choice, what do you what what couldn't you live without? Your band saw or your table saw? Man, this is a really difficult question. But that being said, I owned a band saw before I owned a table saw. Yeah. Uh, now, that being said, oh, look, like, you know, there's, there's more to it. I, I was a carpenter for you know most of my life. Yeah. So I built many houses. I had lots of tools. Surprisingly enough, since I've started building guitars and doing that sort of stuff, I almost don't use my carpentry tools, and I've got a whole new set of like tools that are more for finesse. Yep. But table saw is a luxury, I think. I think they're both a luxury, I shouldn't say. But I don't think I could live without my bandsaw. I do a lot of yep. resawing. Yeah. So you surprised uh, me. Right? You surprise you surprise me because I actually thought with your with your timber background because I, I imagine you ripping sheets and ripping boards and 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 that type of thing see i've got i've got both but i use my table saw maybe three times a year realistically oh yeah hardly ever whereas my band saw my band saw is in use every single time i'm in the workshop every single time we're on the same page then yeah i think so I think yeah. so. So anyone who... I use my table saw every day. Yep, so everyone needs to get their table saws and throw them away. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a really nice one. I'm not throwing it away. Do you know what? I reckon, I honestly think that if I had a good table saw, yep. I think I would use it a lot more. I did, see, yep. I upgraded. I had one of those, um, you know, the Aldi um, $100 band saws, right? Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the ones for the oh, ones. And I've still got it. I've actually still got it there, but you can't get the blades for them. It's nightmarish, right? But I, yep. for, for small cutting and small things, it was it was fine. Like, it wasn't yep. there wasn't a big issue. I did upgrade to the, and I say upgrade with respect because I know you'll probably be chuckling at me when I say this. I did end up getting, I think, the $350 Ryobi one, the green one from, from Bunch. At least you didn't say Azito. I shouldn't say that. My apologies, no. Azito. I shouldn't say that. Half my, I've got to say, most of my tools that I have, my hand tools and things like that, it's all Azito. It's all it's all Azito, except it's either Azito or Aldi. I understand. You remember, the way I see it, and I've always seen it, is it's better to cry once than every time. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's when I hand over the check. That's it. And, <laughs> and, well, I've got... I've got the planar thicknesser. You remember the Aldi planar thicknesser that comes out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was one. two, I think two ninety nine. I'm going to say two ninety nine because I bought it five years ago, and I'm still using it to this day, and I've never <laughs> changed the blades. <laughs> oh, that's also disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never changed the blades. I think I need new blades. Oh, man, I'm shocking. I, I spend a day or at least half a day every week sharpening my tools. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, I, I blade nerd. I, I, sh- <sighs> what, what, what's, what, what is the number one tool that you reckon you use more than anything else in the workshop? As far as not hand tools, but as far as machinery is concerned, the heavy stuff. Uh, the, uh, my drill press. Yeah, yeah, I could see that, but I could do without the drill press if I had to. I think what I couldn't do without is my sanding station. Yeah. See, I've got arthritis. Saying, but See, I, I usually try and do. I do a plane. I use a hand plane for yeah. finishing for the most part. Yeah, but scraping. I. Yeah, but I suck at hand planing. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. better at it. I'm getting better at it. But even professional woodworkers suck at hand planing, yeah. man. Seriously. <laughs> I, like I watched Ben Crow from Crimson Guitars using a hand plane, and he'll like he'll he'll do an entire guitar fretboard like he won't, not even the fretboard you know the, the top of the neck where you actually glue the fretboard onto the top of the yep. neck the, the raw neck he yep. actually uses a hand plane to plane that like that's just yep. there, there's some strange mystical magic in that somewhere I don't know anyway look how I do them yeah, oh, I hate you <laughs> well, well, I'm a hand tool woodworker for the most part. Yeah, know? yeah. No, well, for me, it's for me. I honestly think the one thing I couldn't do without at all. I reckon. See, I could use a jigsaw to cut out the the, the bodies, and I do love my table router. I've got my Ozito. I've got my Ozito table table router with a good Makita uh, router. You know, underneath. Yep. I've got that. Uh, it's all very rudimentary stuff, but no, my sanding station is 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 the number one, guaranteed, through and through. I don't think I could do cause only because I've got arthritis in my shoulders, and I can't sand. Hey, is it, are you oh. talking like disc sander, bobbin sander? Uh, the the disc disc on the side and the and the spinny table toppy thing on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Belt sander. Now that's the one. <laughs> 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 All right. Actually, my favourite sanding part, my sanding machine, is my bobbin sander. Oh, I've got a bobbin sander, but I use it mainly when I'm building electrics. Yeah, I guess that's probably true. So I, I don't. Yeah, I don't use it apart from that. It's it's getting like the edges and the and the inner the inner contours and the rib cage contours because I I love building electric guitars as well. That's why the podcast was changed halfway through to the handcrafted guitar builder because I was so focused on building electric guitars at that time. Um, But at at the end of the day, uh, there's something else happening with that, so I'll talk about that another day. Um, But I suppose the very last thing, so we're on our way out now. So I think that's actually, that's been fun. That has been fun. That's been fun. That's been good. I've enjoyed that. Um... Top tip. Okay, so what's what's this week? This week, what's your top tip? Oh, man. <laughs> you, you know, I gave I, you this I, a week I ago. Actually, I know, I know. But you know what I've actually been doing this week? I've been making my own guitar knobs. So I guess my top tip is do your best <laughs> to make everything yourself. And that's coming from someone who wants you to buy from him. <laughs> so seriously. Yep. Make it yourself. 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 Uh, my top tip is um, stay away from the hot bits when you're working on amplifiers. And if you don't okay. know, here's the point. Here, okay, so here's the point because some of you may know, if you're listening, you may not know. I've spoken about my mate Tim Mason from Oak Amplifiers. Uh, he supplies amplifiers for the shop for me um, and repairs uh, a lot of tube amps. One thing that's very interesting was I always assumed that tube amplifiers were more dangerous to work on than solid state amps. And that's actually not the case. They they can both can be dangerous, but if you don't know what you're doing with the guitar amplifier, don't open it. Okay, okay that so, sounds like something I would never do. Yeah, don't open it. Um it's the, the the difference is, and I, I'll have a chat with Tim one day. We'll talk about it on the podcast because if anyone's interested in building these, you probably looked at an amplifier that was broken on the side of the road and gone, I reckon I could fix that. Um, Don't. <laughs> the secret is if, if you do want to open it up, if you do want to have a look inside it, make sure that it hasn't been t- turned on for a while. If it has been turned on and you've been testing it and it doesn't work, turn it off, pull out all of the plugs, and make sure that the speaker is still attached to the speaker outlets because what that'll do is that'll help drain the capacitors, all right? So little point, 
Don't open amplifiers if you don't need to. I've started working on solid state amps because it's something that I love. But um, I'm telling you, it's, I'm very, I do it very, very gingerly, very, very, very carefully. Um, and it's the difference is basically with a, with a tube amp. If you do get a shock from a tube amp, um, it'll basically throw you. But the problem with a solid state amplifier, it'll actually burn you as well. All right, so it's nasty stuff. So make sure if you're going to play around with an amplifier and you don't know what you're doing, don't. All right, fair enough. That's 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 my top tip for this week. Um, just build an acoustic guitar. Just build, build and play acoustics. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, I've got to say, and this is not a, this is not a, this is not to sell anything at all. I'd never heard one of your little kits before. Uh, Michael brought in one of uh, he bought one of your little amplifier kits. Oh yeah, aren't they nice? That's a killer. Yep, it's a, it's absolutely brilliant, man. I'm gonna get one. <laughs> it's awesome. I yeah, it's got a bit of volume on it, isn't it? For such a little thing. Really, it's a thumper of a thing. It should see the way he's done it. He's put it in a, what, a big black cigar box uh, that opens up from the sides. He's got these uh, locks, uh, big locking mechanisms. He's put on it, and he's put studs all over. It looks like something that's come out of like Mad Max or something like that. It looks. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I'll send you a photo. Dystopia in Australia, 1980. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you a photo. I'll send you a photo. Like Mad Max 3, it's beyond Thunderdome, but a bit, gla- but, a, but it's very glam. It's quite glam, so it's rather funny. So it's like, it's, and I mean that with respect, but it's it like, I would, oh, do you know what I mean? Like, it's quite, it's very, all of everything on it's all very new. It's all very shiny. It's all very, so it's all quite, sp- it's all quite spiky. But it's all quite glamorous, spiky. So it's rather so cool. So got that hair rock, hair metal thing going on. Oh, it's, it's all happening, man. Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. Um, we'll be back, boys and girls, we'll be back next week with the Cigar Box Guitar Builder podcast. Um, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate. Put your questions up on the Facebook group. Uh, Mark, where can we find you, mate? Uh, anyone who wants to find me can find me at cbgemporium.com. Yes, um, or MRWS Instruments, it'll go to the same place. Yep. And, you know, I, I love chatting to my customers as they, as the ones who are listening know. Yep. So, yep. And also... So, so, talk shop. But, but not so much on Facebook, uh, Mr. Black. Oh, not as a personal page, man. No. It's ruining my life. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I'm happy to do Facebook for business, but... Done. You know, not totally to say I won't answer questions if you send me one. Well, I don't... See, I don't even put pictures of the kids and my family or anything. If I, if I didn't have a business... I, I wouldn't be on. I wouldn't be on Facebook or anything like that. It's just, yeah. It's. I. I, I would actually be quite happy without it if it wasn't the fact that you bit the business just basically runs off it. Yeah, pretty much. You know. Anyway, uh, this is Adam. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, send us it. Uh, also, go and check us out. If you're really loving what we're doing on the show, um, if you're thinking about supporting us, please do. Uh, if you're not thinking of supporting us, that's okay too. Just if you're happy listening, that's good. If you don't like us, well, don't listen. So, <laughs> yeah, correct. That's pretty, it's pretty simple. Pretty That's it. simple. If you don't like it, don't listen. But if you do like it, keep listening. If you want to support us, support us. Um, join up. Hit that subscribe thing so that you can get uh, get the show every week. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't have to support us in any other way apart from just listen to us. That's that's what we're here for, guys. Um, if you know anybody online that you, or who has a, a guitar building business or cigar box guitar building business and you reckon that they would be fantastic for us to interview, please get get them in touch with us as well. Yep, that's good. That's it. Mark, I'm going to sign off. This is our episode, was it 57? Of it the doesn't matter, everyone. You have to hunt for the missing episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been barred. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. See ya, mate. Bye-bye.